Hi Storytime Lovers, it's springtime and as the genius comedian Robin Williams once said, spring is nature's way of saying let's party. So what better way to celebrate than with a beautiful butterfly bouquet arranged by a truly inspiring woman, Nicola Davis. If you have never heard of Nicola Davis, wait till I tell you a few amazing facts about this remarkable woman. Nicola Davis is first and foremost a zoologist. A zoologist studies the behavior of animals and their interaction with the ecosystem. And that is important because zoologists are key in preserving natural habitats and protecting endangered species. Nicola Davis decided to write children's books to convey to her readers the vital importance of the natural world and how crucial it is for human beings to have a relationship with it. At the same time, she is really keen to write about children who have a difficult start in life. Thanks to her work, she has been to lots of different places in other parts of the world and her goal is to tell those children that change is possible. And that's exactly what she does in The Promise, a story told in the style of a fable about a young girl who must steal food and money to survive in the mean and hard and ugly city devoid of a single tree, flower or blade of grass. A book she published a few months ago is The New Girl, inspired by the real story of a real little girl who is starting in a new school. She doesn't speak the language that is spoken in that school. She isn't making any friends and she is even being bullied. In this story, the new girl finds a way to connect with the other children by revealing an incredible talent. And what is really unexpected in this story is that it is told from the point of view of the bully. I also strongly recommend another book she only just recently published. Last, the story of a white rhino, the first book she has illustrated herself. Last is also inspired by a real story, the real story of a rhino called Sudan. And it has been long listed for the Green Earth Book Award this year. Last but not least, you should definitely check out Nicola Davis' non-fiction picture books about animals, DNA and even poo. Oops. And now, let me introduce you to a little girl who recovers from her illness by helping revive butterflies. When I came out of hospital, it was winter. There were no flowers in the garden, no colors. Dad said, I'll take you where we can find a bunch of colors, a whole bouquet of them. Dad's bouquet was inside a big glass house where the air was warm and steamy. It shimmered with bright colors, swirls and spots and stripes. Looking closer, I could see eyes and legs and antennae and lots and lots of wings. Butterflies! They dipped and danced in all directions so you couldn't tell where they'd go next. It makes them difficult to catch, said Dad. There are lots of things that like to eat a butterfly. When they landed, they were hard to see. Their folded wings looked just like leaves or bark. But some had spots that looked like eyes and made me jump. I bet that would scare a hungry bird away, Dad laughed. Some butterflies stood out even when their wings were folded. Wouldn't those get eaten up? I asked. They've got a different trick, Dad said. They're poisonous and their bright color is a warning that means don't eat me. Butterflies were everywhere. They fluttered around the flowers and feeders, unrolling their long tongues like straws to suck up sweet nectar. One landed on my hand and walked about. It tickled. Its feet are tasting you, 
Dad said, to see if you're good to eat or if you're the sort of leaf where it could lay its eggs. Of course, I tasted wrong, so it flew off. We searched for eggs. They were really hard to find. Some were all alone and some in little clusters. Each kind of butterfly had laid its eggs on a different sort of plant. So when the tiny caterpillars hatch, they have their favorite food to eat. We found some caterpillars too. We watched for ages, but all they did was eat. Eating is their job, said Dad. Eating and growing. Some of them were massive. One really big one was wrapping itself up in fine white threads to make a little silken sack. It's making a chrysalis, said Dad, so it can change into a butterfly. I didn't see how something like a caterpillar could grow wings and fly. But Dad explained that inside the chrysalis, the caterpillar's body breaks into tiny pieces and then reforms, like a Lego house broken into all its bricks and rebuilt to make a palace. A butterfly began to crawl out of its chrysalis. It looked all wet and crumpled, but slowly its wings stretched out. They began to shimmer and we watched it fly away. Outside, the sky was grey and dull, and I felt ill again. It's weeks to go till spring, I grumbled. But Dad just smiled and said, That gives us lots of time to get our garden ready. Around the edges of the garden, we left the weeds to grow, to give caterpillars food to eat. Then, we chose plants that would make flowers with lots of nectar. A feast for butterflies, Dad said. Planting them was hard work, but I was getting stronger every day. At last, spring came, and one sunny afternoon, a butterfly arrived. And then, another, then three more. It's summer now, and Dad says that I am blooming like a flower and growing like a weed. Every day we sit together in the garden, in the middle of our very own bouquet of butterflies. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story. And you should know that when you get your own copy, there is some fantastic information about the butterfly's life cycle and a guide to planting your own butterfly garden. Now, I would love for you to watch the introduction to this video again and pick a book by Nicola Davis, then come back and tell me about it in the comments. The links to all her books are in the description box below and also a link to listen to Nicola Davis reading My Butterfly Bouquet herself. Finally, I would love for you to head to my new Instagram account and subscribe to get even more book recommendations. Take care, read on and see you soon.